Um, so, you know, we're live streaming this on Facebook or whatever we're doing to make sure you guys have this. First, thank you guys for coming. Appreciate your time. Um, this is the second info meeting we have had for this, and this is our sixth time doing this event. Um, I'm Coach Perry. I'm the founder of this place. I'm the head coach. Um, and I'm going to start by saying this is a charity event. Okay? You are here to first and foremost raise money for a charity of your cause. The second piece is the box instead of the ring. But the first piece is you are here because you want to do something really unique and raise money for charity. So I'm gonna put that out there real clear, okay? If you are not interested in raising money for charity, that's totally cool, and you want to get about, this is not the event for you. I can help you find out how to do that. But this event is mostly about raising money for charity. Because if you've ever stepped on a field and, well, I'm only gonna get into that piece. Um, but that's the first and most important piece about this event. Does that make sense? Everybody understand that part? You're raising man money for charity, okay? I'll get into the next piece. On that, it is really important that you choose a charity that is near and dear to you. Something that when it gets tough and you don't want to get up and go train, or that third round, maybe even the second round of your bout, that night you're like, I don't care. I just don't want to be in the ring anymore. It's going to help you push through that moment. No matter how hard I push you in my gym or if you train in another gym, it does not matter how hard you're pushing out of the gym. In that bout, you're going to have that moment where you're like, I don't care. This is really, if I've done my job as a matchmaker, you're going to have a moment where you're like, I don't care. I'm so tired. You and your opponent are both going to be dead tired and you're just going to want it to be over and you're going to need something to really focus on to get you through that moment. Okay? Push up, we go. Push up. guys have any questions on those parts so far? Did I scare you enough? <laughs> good, good. Someone's going to try to punch you and you're going to punch somebody else. So, um, Just so you know, this is not like, doo, doo, doo. like it's a boxing match. Okay, it's a USA boxing sanctioned event. So it's a real match. You're going to get one of these lovely passbooks that we will talk about. You are going to become a boxer. You will truly be and say you are a boxer after this event um, and after training. Um, training expectations. I'm going to get into the sheet a little bit. Actually, no, I'm going to talk about the history of the event first because um, I don't have it on there. Um, this is good. Um, um, the history of this event, we started it in 2016. I wanted to do a guns versus hoses, which is police versus firefighter event. Um, couldn't get Boulder Police and Fire to get on board, go figure. Um, and I even tried the other real boxing gym in town, it's Front Range Boxing Academy, awesome gym that's right off of Foothills. I even told Davey, the head coach over there, I'm like, yeah, Davey, you could have the police, I'll take the firefighters. And he's like, I know exactly what you're doing. I don't want the police. I want the firefighters. <laughs> so he called me on that hustle. But one of my um, clients, they came in, and they're like, founder fights. I got it. So this event eventually started as founder fights. It was founder versus founder of different companies. Because um, it used to be a really strong connection between the business community and the boxing community. And I wanted to kind of get that going again and doing something for our community. That was the guns versus hoses doing something to give back. So in, instead, we molded it into Founder Fight. Since then, we've changed the name last year to Unite to Fight because I've opened it up to not just founders of businesses, um, just people who want to unite, step in the ring, and raise money for a cause that's close to their heart. Um, so in the five years that we've done it, we've, you guys, I should say, have raised over $500,000 for local and national charities, which I'm pretty proud of that. We are not some major chain, you know, an Easton's or one of those, but we have had, I feel like, a pretty large impact um, on the community and being able to give back and do something unique um, and change lives. Shelby, what was your nonprofit? Um, my nonprofit that I raised money for was Love Does, and they help kids in contact zones, um, giving them education, basic human rights. That 
piece about finding a cherry that is near and dear to your heart is a big deal because she had a you said earlier, she had a really tough sparring session. You guys will spar your opponent before I decide. Again, I want to make sure it's a good match. You'll have a, a trial sparring session with them. Her trial sparring session was a tough one. It's kind of like an eye opener because her opponent was real wild and kind of like that. It's kind of like, whoa, what is this? I'm um, came from another gym. And what did I tell, well, I will say it for you. I, from that point on after that sparring match, and I, I have no problem like putting everything, finding a way to dig the best out of my athletes. Um, I told her, remember what happens to those children in those war zones? What are the types of things that happen to them? And I put it right out there for her. I mean, I will dig deep, I'll find whatever will get you guys hyped up. I'm like, that opponent, your opponent is that person. They have done those things. And the night of your bout, what was that like? She destroyed her opponent. It was beautiful. It was then at that point, maybe even a, I could almost say a mismatch, but yeah, her opponent was like, stop hitting me. <laughs> at one point told her, but I found a way. I mean, before that it was not, but you, you gotta find that thing that's going to really get you over that hump and make you focus. Okay, and she used that through the rest of her training for the next two weeks after um, her sparring session and then that night. It was a unanimous decision, which I typically don't want those, but that was just a mental. This sport, custom out, you guys, I will send you stuff. It's so much mental, so much mental. So, um, so history, this is gonna be our sixth year. Um, and so we're proud we're at Boulder Theater. Any questions on that part of the history or anything you guys wanna know more about in that aspect? <sighs> Easy crowd. Um, Formal training, here, if you're training at my gym with me, and you don't, it's not mandatory, um, we start training camp on March 28th, 0530, in the morning, right in the morning, gym opens up, I expect you guys dressed out, wrapped, and on a dot at 0545, waiting on me, I should never wait on you guys, do not have me waiting on you, we go to 0700. That's Mondays and Wednesdays. It's not mandatory, but it is highly recommended, especially if you're training out of my gym. Um, and then you're gonna supplement your training with other classes here throughout the week. Um, da, da, da. If you're training at another gym, you're just gonna be underneath your coach's tutelage and whatever they expect you, the demands that they put on you. Um, I don't control that, but I do expect you to train. This is not a, like just a step in. I want you guys, I want good matches. I want you guys to be safe. Amateur boxing is actually one of the safest contact sports. Um, there are, you're going to get somebody with likability, size, um, experience. Everybody sitting ringside at an amateur bout, our job and our responsibility, number one responsibility is the safety and the development of the athlete, primarily the safety of the athlete. Um, so we're gonna step in and give what's called standing eight counts. Even if you get hit and you're like, totally fine. If the ref thinks that there's something wrong, they're gonna step in and give you a standing eight count. Don't argue with the ref, we'll get more into that stuff, but you just go, okay, they're just trying to keep me safe, that's all. Doesn't mean anything on the cards. And a pro fights what you see on TV. Why do people go see NASCAR? They wanna see crap shoot. Why do people watch pro fighting? They wanna see someone get knocked out, okay? That's like this weird part of our psyche. That's what they want. So that's how they make matches. They allow things to go a little bit further than what we would allow in average. Because everybody sitting ringside in a pro fight, their job is to entertain the crowd. That's the job. Athletes, the ref, maintain at least enough control of the match, all that. Amateurs, safety, development of the athlete. So the difference, so when people are like, you're crazy, you're gonna get in there and get hurt. I'm not saying you're not gonna get hurt, it is still a contact sport, but it is one of the safest contact sports you can participate in. We're like in the 20th, and the, the rankings. Anybody want to guess what the most dangerous sport is? Football is not one. Nope. Any weapons? Nope. It's up there. It's ahead it's of us. Fly suits where they would like, jump out. Oh yeah, and jump out. I don't know if that's on the list, but I'm sure it's right somewhere now, there. No. Something a little bit more common. We'll cut to because I don't want to spend like five minutes. No. Nope. Yes. Sure. Middle school cheerleading. cheerleading. Most death and fatalities per participant. Um, and paralyzing. 
because they're always shown, think about it guys, we all were in middle school, they all get the cafeteria, they're all like, don't have any of the safety, the padding, all that stuff that they really need unless they're at a really big school and they try to do stunts, you know, serious stunts. Um, so that's actually, let your kid, you let your daughter and your son box, don't let them be a cheerleader. What's that? Is it not, not even considered a sport? It's considered a uh, extra curricular activity. They used yeah. to, but now it is considered oh, a now sport. Is, okay. Now we, because it is. I mean, it's a high level. I was a, I'm a, my degree is in sports medicine. I'm an athletic trainer. We're the ones that run out of the field when people get hurt. The only coach at my high school that intimidated me was a cheer coach. <laughs> the football coach, I could take away a helmet. They didn't argue with me. The cheer coach, I had a girl with like, I mean, ACL tear where her name was what I did what's called a lot. It slid. And she's like, why can't she practice? I'm like, her ACL is torn. You know, I had another cheerleader come in. She like had her hands on her face and she's like laughing hysterically. And I'm like, what's wrong with like, she was just one of those goofy kids. She took her hand, like her nose was over here because she was a base and one of her um, flyers fell on her face. And she's like, like, she was in shock. But they're like, they're tough athletes, um, depending on your program. And that coach, she would find out whatever the football team did in conditioning and the cheer team had to be double the next day. Um, so I have a lot of respect. Um, so footwork is probably one of the most important things that I emphasize in this gym, my coaching. I think it's important for all guys. You know, again, it's your coach if you're training out, not here. It's up to them to develop your protocol, but what's the first thing that goes on? If you can't step your legs with your punches or stand up, you're not gonna be able to punch and you move around on the ring. So legs, footwork, being a place where you can hit them and they can't hit you. Um, defensive strategies and sparring it is on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 0530. If you are new to the sport, and how many of you have never even boxed? At all. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's good. This is like tailored for you. Um, I, you have to get permission from me before I let you into sparring, but I want you training consistently so I can get you into sparring at least a month in, and we'll build you up. It's not like I don't, at my gym, again, I don't throw you in there, you don't go live the first day. It's not what we call open rounds. You're probably gonna go with somebody more experienced than you, way more experienced than you, which sounds scary, but it's so much safer than me throwing two rookies in the ring. That is a disaster. Somebody with more experience, they got nothing to prove, they'll work with you, they know how to touch you, they have control. You actually learn. I watched Jake Paul fight. What's that? I watched oh God, Jake yeah, Paul fight. Exactly. God, one, one day when you just box somebody I real. I see a real boxer. Yes. I mean, yeah, we could go have beers and talk all about my philosophy on that, the good and the bad of it. Um, defensive strategy is inspiring. I do expect you to be in there once or twice a week once you've been cleared um, for that. It's just going to prepare you. Um, the more you train, the better you will feel come fight night. Um, I'm saying fight. Technically, we're not supposed to say fight. It's the difference between pros and amateurs. Um, they just call it United Fight. I get a lot of crap from our LBC president, Jeannie DePriest, for saying fight, but it sounds better than box. Um, I will say that. Um, you will never feel ready for your first match, ever. You don't feel ready. Like, I, don't, I can't do it. You, you will be ready. Trust your coaching. If you've been training, you'll be ready if I let you in that ring. Um, the, the piece that will help you, though, mentally stepping in is if you've done everything up until that moment. Okay. Um, Lorena over there, she is actually my bachata uh, coach and trainer, my instructor. Um, I had a performance, my first performance, same, same. And everybody's like, are you nervous? Are you like scared and all that? And I honestly, I wasn't because I did everything I possibly could to get ready. I'm like, I danced, I did privates, I trained on my own. I'm like, I look good, I even did my makeup. I haven't worn makeup since high school, you guys. I made sure I look good. So I'm like, if something happens this night, I've done what I can. All cards on the table, I've done it. And that's how it is, I'm telling you, if you do all of your training, you don't cut corners, you're gonna be like, I've done everything I possibly can to step into this one to be prepared. Um, and you're gonna be a lot more relaxed that week. You know, and when you do have those moments of anxiety, you'll be able to go back instead of thinking about fears and stories that are, aren't true, you'll be able to think of, okay, wait, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did these things that you can fall back on, and that's gonna calm your nerves. If you didn't, that's, you're not gonna be able to calm your nerves. Um, so that's a really, really big deal. Um, the other piece, 
having to say that is, um, and what makes this opportunity also unique, and I hope this take this with you, it takes some pressure off of you, is boxing, nothing is better than winning a boxing match. What you've done. I have done rugby, softball, I've played so many different sports. Nothing beats the feeling of winning a boxing match. On the flip side of that, nothing is worse than losing a <laughs> boxing match. Absolute worst feeling. It cuts you to your core. Because it's something about being able to defend yourself, like take care of your family. It's, it's just a different feeling than losing in other sports. Um, the drawback that you have though, doing this event, and something you can like take a deep breath on, is you have raised money for charity. You have made a difference for your charity. So, you know, it sounds cheesy, but I do believe that you haven't lost. Even if you do, you're on the, the wrong side, your hand doesn't get raised that night, you can still stand very proud knowing you've done something that most people don't do, and you risk something, you risk losing to raise money for charity. And that is something to be very, very proud about, um, in my opinion. Um, okay, um, you can do private sessions with the corner coaches getting ready. Uh, I encourage it. Uh, I will not be doing them though. I train all of you guys and I hate you all equally. <laughs> I'm not gonna help you, okay? I don't pick a side. Um, I do my best to stay impartial, even with people I've known for a while, I really try my best. Um, but you can do privates with one of the coaches here on staff. Um, once you do, and you can talk to me over, I will like recommend somebody maybe that might fit you better. They will work your corner the night out. I also do not work corners unless my athletes are boxing another gym's athlete. I don't work the corners because again, I, I try to stay as neutral as possible. Um, however, if you're always late and you're a pain in my ass, I probably will hate you in a minute. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Oh, and on that one, um, I'm not the same coach that you guys see me in the fitness classes. I'm preparing you for something. I'm preparing you for stepping in the ring. I am not the same person. I can be mean. I have been called a bully. I've had somebody in tears saying to me, I miss the relationship that we used to have. <laughs> like, I am preparing you for a very stressful experience. And I'm going to make sure I do everything to pull the best out of you. Like I said, with with Shelby, I did what it took to pull the best out of you. You know, I have had some amazing coaches, Coach Bashir Abdullah, um, Al Mitchell, Christy um, Halbert, some really great coaches that have coached Olympians. I have been on the U.S. national team. I was captain of the U.S. team for about 10 years. I am now one of the full national coaches, elite coaches. Um, I know how to get the best out of athletes. And so... That's it. Anything on, on that so far, the training expectations? Make sense? Okay. Weight expectations. Boxing is a weighted sport. Your weight will be tracked. Um, I want you guys within seven to 10 pounds every time, depending on your weight category. I give a little bit bigger spread, the bigger. Smaller spread, smaller. I more, it's almost like more of a percentage of body weight. Um, and this uh, keeping, uh, this is non-negotiable. These are also rules. It's not a weight class necessarily. It's not like, Sammy, you're, what are you weight now? Like 160 something? Oh, I had you know, to call to me, right? Um, it's not like normally your weight class is 152. You don't have to be at 152 or uh, like, it's a, a range that I met you guys up with this one. It's not a tournament where you have to be on a certain weight and under. Um, Matches will be created by the coaching staff to create a fair and even matches based on age, weight, and skill level. Um, I will be tracking your guys' weight. I do not want you guys cutting weight. You know, so don't you know say, oh, I'm normally 180, but I'm gonna box at 165 because I'm gonna cut 10 pounds, you know, the day of or the, because I saw that this so-and-so fighter, that's what they do in the pros. No, it is a charity event, you guys. Come on. Like, again, you're not cutting. I'm gonna track your weight and I'm gonna go by. Now, if you were, we have three months or a little shy of three months. If you're like, hey, one of my goals is to drop down 10 pounds and that's a healthy amount of time to be able to do that. I'll support that, but we're gonna track and make sure you're on that path, okay? I'm not gonna do like 10 or 15 pounds a week up. Is that clear, okay? Um, we do have something, we had actually somebody in the last um, 
the last meeting that it was about 175 and somebody told him you should box at 155. I'm like, what are you basing? Because he's a pretty lean guy already. I'm like, what are they basing that on? Like, that's 20 pounds. I don't know if you have 20 pounds to lose. So something we do have here, if you are one of my athletes that we might put you on to really see what's the healthiest thing for you if you, if you have some goals, it's called the in-body. It gives me your exact um, body mass index, and I can see from that, okay, they have this much skeletal mass, they have this much fat mass. Like This is what's realistic for them to, to drop into and do it in a healthy way. And I can help you set those goals. Again, if you're not boxing out of this gym, that's between you and your coach. But again, I'm not letting you drop like 20 pounds or 20% of your body weight that I will have that conversation with your coach for you if I need to. Um, so I want to keep you guys safe and healthy. Uh, most injuries, especially in pro sport that you see, really are avoidable. It's They drop too much, too much weight too fast. Um, any questions on that? Are you training at my gym or another gym? Uh, either. Beautiful. Um, I can talk to you about that. I'm not going to go really in depth because that's not my specialty, but I can give you some simple like things to go by. And I'm a very like simple, straightforward person. We all know what we probably should and shouldn't eat. It's there's no like magic bullet or this or that guide. It's like stay on the perimeter of the grocery store, eat whole foods. If you can't read what's in the package, probably not going to be the best source of food for you. I tell my athletes. If you have a really nice car, you're gonna treat that car really well and put the best fuel in it. It's the same with your body. Just put the best fuel in that body. Um, and having said that, just because we're older doesn't mean, I'm now in my 40s, doesn't mean that you can't take it. If you have an ache or pain, take care of it. Don't ignore it. If you had a really nice old car, you take extra care of it. You, you store that car in a garage. You put the best fuel in it. You always make sure the tires are like, you take really good care of that older car. It's the same with our bodies. As they get older, you take better care of it. You cherish it. Okay? When you're young, you don't take care of it as well. And as we get older, we should take better care of it. Um, so, any questions? So that, that was a good question. Um, USA Boxing membership. You guys will all become registered athletes with USA Boxing. That's really important because you have to be registered in order to participate in this event because it is a USA Boxing sanctioned event. Um, I believe it's $75 to register. We will send you out the PDF that will have the link to register. Um, I want that done by April 15th. You need to, at least the registration, you need that, you need to be a registered athlete for me to allow you to spar in my gym because I'm, one, again, I'm one of the national coaches. What that gives you guys is A, you're like, Ability to step into a ring, but also it's secondary medical insurance. So if you do get injured, you get a break or you hurt your wrist, something like that, whatever your insurance doesn't pick up, it kicks, can kick over to that secondary insurance. And if I have a registered athlete and a non registered athlete sparring each other, and that, um, let's just say the registered athlete gets injured, it doesn't matter. It's a void because I've had them sparring a non registered athlete. So for that insurance to come into play, both athletes need to be registered. So that's why I have that mandatory for you. Um, again, what your coach does in their gym is up to them. I don't dictate that. They should be doing it that way. That's kind of a telltale, you know, good good gym, in my opinion. Taking care of their athletes, making sure they're, they're protected. Read your, there's a reason why, you guys, how much do I have in red on this page? <laughs> Not much. There's a reason why it's red. Read your registration <laughs> email, please. Okay, once you register, there's still a couple more steps. You're gonna need to get a copy um, of your birth certificate or passport. You do not have to um, be a US citizen to compete in this event either. You can be a non-citizen. Um, it's just for like US national stuff like that where you could be on the US team, you do, but not for this. You will need to do a physical that is appropriate for your age. There's different physicals depending on our age and that, that's required to have, and we'll get into the next one. And you're going to mail that to Bo Campbell, and then he will um, send you your book. You forward your registration email to membership at the Corner Boxing Club. That way, I just know that you're registered. When you finish that, you mail all that stuff off to Bo. Um, he's going to send you your book. Now, if you look at this, you won't be able to see it, but right here is a picture. Also, in that confirmation email, it's going to say, "Current get two passport-like photos." 
hopefully they change that by now. And I think you can even actually upload all of your paperwork now online to get it to vote. I don't even know if you have to mail it. Um, but you could also just upload your photo onto your little membership card when you register with USA Boxing. You don't have to do that passport photo. That's one step that'll make your life a little bit easier. What you will then get, Bo will send you, is one of these lovely books, okay? Um, and actually, um, Krista, will you go in that very back office and grab me another yellow and another white book? You'll see it on the back wall. So there's different um, kind of groups according to our age in USA Boxing. Um, 18 to 40, you can receive a white book, okay? Actually, it's to your 40th birthday. Yeah, perfect. A white book. This is your membership for the White Book Club, okay? A white book can only box a white book. So you present these books at the table, boom, they work, same A, or within the age range, 18 to 40, da 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 weight, all that stuff. When we are 40 and older, so once you've hit 40, I should have said like 39 and last day of 39, if you're a white book, 40 and older, we receive yellow books, okay? We get a yellow book. A yellow book can only box a yellow book, or I should say 35 and up, and you get a yellow book. Yellow book can only box a yellow book. You have to be within 10 years to the day to be to box each other. So if you're 10 days in a week, no match. Okay, it's not within the age range. Um, when you are 35 to 40, yay, I used to be in that club, now I'm out of that club. You get both books, you get double membership. Look at you go. So you have more options. So if you, how many of you guys are between 35 and 40 in this room? Oh, only one, you get double membership. You're the special guy. So you're gonna make sure you get both your books. You know, I'll probably have an idea before then that, but I still want you to just have both of your books because that doubles your options. It really spreads out your options and my options to match you. But again, if we, if I match you against a white book, you need to make sure, and I'm gonna have your books, but we present that book. If I match you into another yellow book, you're gonna present your yellow book. Does that make sense, that part of it? Okay, good. Uh, no questions so far? Anybody getting nervous? Like, oh, this is a lot of stuff. It is, but it's not. Just stay on top of it as you go. Trust me, the training is the toughest part. <laughs> the night of is the toughest part. That, like, 30 minutes before you step into the ring, <sighs> Even doing mitts, like warming up, my experience was, and I hated it. You could do what's called mitts, punch pads with your coach, typically. I hated doing mitts beforehand. I needed them because I knew it helped me, but I felt so weak and my time was all, always off. I'm like, I can't hit, like, no, no power. N nervous wreck before I got into the ring, stepped in the ring. The moment the bell went, though, it all went away. Like, magic, magic, magic. And I felt so much better, especially the first time I got punched. That, that, that really helps. That's like, okay, I'm okay. Everything's fine. Let's do this. That first punch does help. Try not to let them punch you, though. Be the first one to punch you, and it helps. That feels good, too. Um, you're going to need to get doctor's approval. Again, we want to make sure you guys are safe and ready um, to step in the ring. All boxers will need a physical and physician's approval to train and compete. So that physical you print off, that's either uploaded or mailed to both. Um, you can schedule it with your primary urgent care physician who can complete this exam for you. Schedule this appointment as soon as you can. To get that. If you have a physical though within the last year, um, and I should say like June 11th and sooner, we may be able to just use that physical. If you had one though before June 10th of last year, you can't. It has to be within one year of your match for it to be a valid physical. Um, and master's boxers over 45, there's some additional. You have to get an EKG and some other things just to make sure your ticker is good to go. There's some eye things that you need to do to make sure your retina is all clear. Hey, we want you guys to be safe. That's the number one thing is your safety and that you're ready um, to step in. I, Dr. Nelson Trujillo is who I always recommend people go to. He's an awesome cardio doc, um, cardiologist with BCH, but we can always help you, you know, give you some suggestions or if you are having trouble with that. Um, any questions with that? Did you get the or did you use the eye and all those paperwork? I have seen him do that. I don't think he's had the eye. Yeah. And so I've also seen regular primary docs also do that. 
Um, I think it just depends on um, if they have, if they're comfortable signing off and they can, and doing that or that, the exam, whatever is required. So that's kind of between you and that doc. Um, I can't speak for them, unfortunately, and maybe fortunately. Um, anything on that part of it? Uh, equipment needed, you will need a mouth guard. Foil bites will suffice, so they're kind of like those ones that you just put in that you know do your hide and all that have. Um, we have them for five bucks, but I highly recommend a custom guard, a real mouth guard that like is fitted to your mouth. It is a game changer, you guys. You don't want to have to deal with a mouth guard that's moving around. Who here has ever had a custom mouth guard? Yeah, they're amazing. Worth it. It's so <laughs> worth it. You know, it's so worth it. It just stays in place. It's one less thing to have to think about that's moving around. Because boil bites, they move around. And it's even harder to breathe. So something that just sits there, it's nice, makes life way better. Um, you know, you can go to your dentist. The trouble I've had with people going to their regular dentist is sometimes, and it amazes me, I, always, I tell them too, Okay, if you're gonna go to your right, make sure they know it's for a boxing match. I have seen dentists go give them like night guards. Are you kidding me? Like, no, that's not gonna work. I mean, it always baffles me. It just baffles me. Um, I highly recommend going to Dr. Dre, um, Andrew Schmidt. Um, Doc, she is here in Boulder. She normally said gives you guys a better deal too because she knows she's one of the sponsors of this event. Um, and she will make sure you have a sweet mouth guard. Oh, well, I don't know, you just, oh, deep breath, deep breath, deep breath, okay, get over here and sit down, have some silence, I should make you guys all do push-ups right now, okay, um, you guys almost got to see the carry that you see in the morning, but I'm not going to right now, because I might need it tomorrow night, um, so yeah, so as you should have just seen Dr. Dre, she would do stuff with a really nice guard. She's had over 30 matches also. Um, whenever people are like, oh, you know, this and that, and boxing, so they, my best athletes in this gym literally were her, who's a doctor, dentistry, and then an applied mathematics professor at CU, Murray. Any, guy, any of you guys who spar here know Murray? It's like the man with eight arms, okay, and no head. It's like his head was right there, now his head's gone. Where'd he go? Um, my best athletes. Boxing is, and you will see, it's a, a thinking man sport. Physical chess match. Um, you will need gloves and wraps. You can purchase them here if you want to, or outside. I can get you like, um, I, it's just I would go to Dix or Amazon. They have like crap equipment. At least come to me, or Shelby knows enough about gloves to kind of guide you. Um, it's just my recommendation. You're gonna want to get also at least 16 ounce gloves. Um, you want that way to just aid to protect. You don't want to be training in a 10 ounce gloves because you're going to compete, um, especially all my males, in 16 ounces. It's another layer of protection. Again, I want to keep you guys safe. So if you're training in 10s and I put 16s on you that night, you're going to have your arms going to, it doesn't sound like much, six ounces, but six ounces is a lot of weight. Um, big weight difference. Wrestling or boxing shoes are recommended. <coughs> Especially, you can box some tennis shoes, they allow it. But again, it's like the mouth guard, especially the shoes are more, your movement and everything, so much better in boxing shoes. Wrestling shoes work, but they're a lot more flexible. You guys on the bottom, a boxing shoe is flexible, but it's a lot stiffer also. It's like an in-between, and you're able to push off a lot better lateral, lateral movement, forward movement. Uh, boxing shoes a little bit squishier, like squishy in the sense that it gives with your foot, so it's a lot harder to drive. No barefoot. Um, so, highly recommend level one of those. Sparring gear is available during sparring sessions here. I have loaner gear, um, but if you want to invest in your own, I can help you with that. You just have to clear if you're training in my gym what gloves are allowed in sparring. Um, Oh, you do not wear in your in this gym your regular bag gloves. I do not allow for sparring. You will wear either my sparring gloves or your own sparring gloves. So you're not going to bring in outside or your bag gloves you're using in sparring, just because they pick up dirt from the ground or all that. I don't want to have to like deal with all that. So your sparring gloves are only meant for sparring, and there's a type of glove that I like. Like rival gloves, I do 
and not allow my gym for sparring. They are mean gloves and you can do some damage with them, okay? Sparring, I try to make it as safe as possible for you guys. That's where most injuries happen. Hand injuries, head injuries, anything like that. Um, headgear, gloves, and uniforms will be forever provided the night of UTF. We have them. Um, thanks for having them. But uh, Masters, we wear 16 ounce headgears. Um, 40 and under, or I'm sorry, 39 last day and under. You guys are allowed to wear 10 ounce headgear, the lighter headgear. Um, masters, we have to make sure that we have a masters headgear on though. It's got a little little patch on it. Um, can we, what do you guys want me grabbing you the headgears? Like an extra one? No, for Thank you. Um, you grab, or she grab them. So the, the headgears that we wear in competition are USA boxing headgears. So they have a little stamp on them because they're peer reviewed. You can't just use any headgear in, box, in, a, in a match. Um, also with gloves, we will provide them with gloves the night of. So you don't wear your own, even sparring gloves the night of the match. They are gloves that our LBC has just for that night. I actually have my own USA boxing um, certified gloves that we use. So I bought my own so that we have our nice gloves. Thank you. Um, so like this is, you'll see I'll have it passed on. This is a master's headgear, it's 16 ounces. It has the USA little patch on here and it has a little M. That's how we know it's a master's headgear. The regular one doesn't have that little M with a circle. So pass it around. Pass it around, pass it around, that's it. Um, you will be wearing, um, you can wear your own, depending on what we end up doing. This is Josh and Jackie. They are actually putting on this event. You know, as far as all the logistics, all the awesome stuff that happens, that'll be those two. They're working, we might have, um, we will, you will definitely wear our jersey top. We might have some shorts for you guys, otherwise, I've got tons of boxing shorts that you guys will wear. You have to have a contrasting waistband that defines, so you're not gonna be wearing like your own like running shorts in the ring. Um, we'll get more into that in slowly at some point. Any questions on that stuff? So you can't have your own shorts, but as long as it's contrasting waistband. Contrasting waistband, yep. Unless we end up having an apparel sponsor, then you'll have to wear what I, they tell you to wear, what I tell you to wear. Um, dun, dun, dun. For sure the tank though you will be wearing. Bout details, it's three rounds. One minute, minute and a half, or two minutes, depending on what I decide. What's gonna be the safe and best for you and your opponents. Um, last year was the most two minutes we've ever had. It was the best group I've ever also had come through training. Most of the time it's three one minute rounds, which doesn't sound like much. I've had people like, I've been training three threes, I can do, no, it is a very different experience. Again, that night, very different experience than anything else. You're gonna be on bowler stage the whole week, you haven't been sleeping, your adrenaline, you will feel go ramp up and ramp down. If anybody's ever felt that adrenaline rush, it, it non stops that whole week, that day of. Like, you would not believe, and you are exhausted before you even step in the ring if you don't know how to control that adrenaline rush. Um, we had a guy, I always like to tell the story, Matt Cubis. He was supposed to, if you guys ever heard of Fight Camp, he was supposed to box their CEO. It's like this, like, little, uh, it's like the Peloton, boxing of Peloton kind of version. He was supposed to box Khalil, their CEO. Khalil, I think, realized he was training out of New York about two weeks out, like, hey, this is gonna be a real match and I'm not ready. So he dropped out. So I had to find Matt, a regular um, athlete, basically from our LBC, I pulled. Matt busted his ass the entire camp. He was training like twice, the best any athlete's ever trained, twice a day, doing privates, all of the things that I would ever ask of an athlete to prepare. We find him an opponent from our LBC and him being a tech guy, all of his buddies like went and like scoured the webs, the web you say, and found his opponent. And I would even be scared of his opponent. Like if I, like his opponent found this picture of Jack, his name's like tattooed across his back. Like he was like, I was just gonna buy, he, he wanted to quit. He's like, I just was hoping for a tech startup guy. Like I would, I didn't, this, I'm not ready for this. Again, you're never gonna feel like ready. Me and the coach that was here at that time, Kumiso Ikopoling, he's a three-time Olympian from Botswana. Me and Kumiso had to talk Matt off a ledge, 
Like, you are ready for this. You are more than ready. I, I would put Matt in there with anybody else who had no matches. I didn't care. Um, and we end up boxing, and halfway through the second round, me and Camisa just kick back, and we're just laughing. Like, just laughing. Because even though Matt was in extreme shape, and we did 3-2, you, you remember the match. Him and his opponent were like this across from each other, literally hands like this, like Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> and me and Camisa were dying. I mean, we were winning. We won. He won the match, um, handedly, actually. But it was a great match, and they were both dead tired. And that was three twos. Um, not even three threes, three twos. And that was the second round. Um, and after that match, though, I mean, I have a really nice text message still saved from him. He's like, that was the best experience of my entire life. And he almost stepped aside. He almost didn't do it. He's like, I learned more from myself having to go through the, the whole emotional thing, stepping in there, raising money for my charity. He's like, that that was something special. So I love to share that story, because especially just to get through the Mortal Kombat thing. Because that's exactly, <laughs> right, Krista? Exactly what they look like. They, yeah. Um, dun, dun, dun. Your coach will be in your corner communicating strategy to you the entire bout. You're not going to hear a thing, though. Never do. I come back to the corner when I do work a corner, and your eyes are like this. And I go, take a deep breath. And you guys all go, because you have not taken a breath for the last minute or two minutes. You have held your breath. What do we do when we're scared? We hold our breath. So do your best to practice listening to us and sparring and everything, but I just try to make sure you guys breathe personally when I'm in the corner and use your jab. It's the most important punch. Nobody uses it. Um, Fight camp tip. Tips, be consistent with your training, take care of yourselves. Like I said, take, you gotta take care of your car, take care of your body. When you have aches and pains come up, do not ignore them, do not think, oh, they're gonna go away. Ice baths, ice are your best friend. Again, my degree's in sports medicine. You get an ache or pain after practice, get ice on it right away, 15, 20 minutes. Take some ibuprofen. It's the difference between it bothering you for the next two weeks or it being gone in a couple days. Um, you're not gonna get better any better, so rest and focus on what, oh, the, oh sorry, we'll skip down the fire. Take care of your, uh, take care of yourselves, your mind as much as your body, okay? Watch boxing movies, I love Cinderella Man, it's my favorite movie. Um, True story. Yeah, yep, it's the best movie. Really encompasses what I think the sport is about, but um, taking care of your mind, read some books, psychology books, practice when that, those doubts come in, especially after sparring, Bring yourself back to what you did well. You know, if, if I say, you, you, you suck, you, you were bad that sparring session, or if I say, hey, you, that was suboptimal. One says that's all you're capable of, you suck. One says, hey, I see that you're capable of more. So whenever you want, ah, I sucked that, no, I was bad, try to switch it back to, that was suboptimal. It's a different feeling, like, oh, I'm capable. Suboptimal will tell you I'm capable of more and I know it, and it gives you something to make a plan towards, Bad is kind of like, eh, I'm gonna give up, like I can't do it. So re rewording yourself and your self-talk is really, really important. And I'm not saying, not just in boxing, but in life, you guys. Just try using suboptimal instead of bad. It'll change things greatly for you. Sleep and take care of your aches and pains is a must. Don't assume they will go away on their own any more than you will get better at boxing by wishing it. Okay, take care of it. Fight week tips. The work is done. You're not gonna get any better that week. Take care of yourself. Don't like some. It hasn't happened, luckily, in a while. But some people try to do like ten practice. No, you're not gonna get any better. I'm not gonna let, like get with your coach. Do whatever you have to do with you mentally to feel calm and relaxed, and take care of yourself. Um, you shouldn't be in here training a lot that week. You should be resting, and recovering, because you spent the last ten weeks training hard. Um, da -da -da -da, focus. You're not gonna get any better, so rest and focus on what you want to do, not your fears, okay? That's just that rewiring. When, it, when doubt arises, redirect your attention to the work you have put in and the progress you have made. If you train consistently, you'll have a whole bag of good stuff. I love it, like taking down those like positive things that went really well, write them down and track them during your training camp. And then that week of, maybe pull three or four ones that were really solid, focus on those three or four things that you were doing really well, and then your mouth guard, and even before then, if you have a mouth guard case, which you get one, um, 
put down a couple different little keywords on your mouth guard. So every time you go to put on in that mouth guard, maybe it's one thing you want to do when you step in the ring, use my jab. One thing you want to do mentally is, you know, your nonprofit's name, breathe, something like that. So put in those two things so that every time you're saying that and you're reinforcing that. You know, have off thought. It works. Um, no one feels ready for the first bout. This is normal, so breathe through it. Trust your training, trust your coaches. And one of my favorite things, if my coach told me to do something in the ring, I did it. I'm not gonna be like, oh, my, my opponent knows, so I'm not gonna do it. I don't care. If my coach says jab, I'm jab. If my opponent's coach said jab or one, two, guess who was gonna throw that one, two? I did what my coaches, uh, or what my opponent's coach would say even sometimes in the ring. I loved it when my opponent's coach would be like, why is she listening to me better than you are? <laughs> and that literally happened a lot. Because if I heard my opponent's coach call combo, I would throw it. Um, and I damn well always did whatever my coach told me. I even had a training partner, um, Frank Fast Hands Franklin. And Frank was the one person I could hear in the stands. I, I had a match where there was a fire alarm going on. I didn't even know the fire alarm was going on, so I watched the video. But I heard Fast Hands Frank telling me what to do. Um, by the evening timeline, to be announced, basically, I think we're gonna weigh in. The medicals will be at 3 p.m. that day. You guys will get your sex, come back, and we'll have a little battle or when I want you guys there, give me your hands and that sort of a thing. Um, fundraising expectations. Again, this is a charity boxing match, a fundraising event. If you do not want to raise money for charity, this isn't the event for you. If anything, this is an, the boxing is the excuse because you want to raise money for charity, and you're looking for, and here's your reason, you're gonna step into a match, a ring. Um, choose a nonprofit to fight for and start raising money, uh, fundraising as soon as you commit to a night to fight. Um, we get you guys, once I go through my list, um, we'll get you guys set up with your Give Lively page. Um, once you select a nonprofit, we were, you'll be required to start a Give Lively page prior to your first week of training, well, that first week um, of training. That's your like little platform where you'll send people to donate. Um, this will be people donate to your cause down there you can see previous years um, that's a really important piece again is the fundraising you guys gotta remember you're not when you go to ask you're not asking for money for yourself you're asking for money for your charity a lot of people have a hard time doing that you have to set up your asking and even then really get them first get them excited about what you're doing the people have done the best with their fundraising is they have started social media accounts um, that are just for their fundraising cause and ask people to follow that and you get done with training and you post something i've got a great one i still have it saved um, maybe we'll repost it to our instagram um madison where she had this video of herself and like steams coming off of her and she it had a verbiage I walked, I walked out of the gym a different woman than I walked in today. And there's like steam coming out of her face. Like, um, you know, when you're telling your story of what you're going through and all that, get people like, do like weekly goals. Like, hey, my goal this week is to raise $250. I'm only a hundred bucks away from hitting that goal. You know, who can help me? You know, doing those little things. So make it small, manageable and give your people, just like you're giving yourself goals in the gym, give yourself little fundraising goals and markers that you want to hit as you go through this. And communicate that to the, your followers and the people around you. Like, I'm trying to hit this goal this week. This is what I'm doing. Telling your story is really, really important. And telling the story of your nonprofit. Um, the nonprofit you pick, I highly recommend you reach out to them and build a relationship with them. Let them know, hey, I'm stepping into the ring on June 10th, raising money for your charity. And make sure they're behind you. You know? Because they might be like, oh, boxing, we don't want to be associated with boxing. You might have to like, kind of let them know, okay, well, so here's kind of like what it's about. Here's what, why we're doing it. A little bit more about amateur boxing in the community. It's not the same as what you see on TV. You know, it's very different. My, I'm friends with all my opponents. I always looked at my, the boxing community, it's my family. Um, I, got, I moved around a lot as a kid, all that. Um, I grew up in Detroit. Once I found the sport of boxing, literally it was my family. My, look at my, my coach, Coach Brescia Grua, to making me tear up, painted that on camera. Um, he's like my dad, you know? They're my family. That's why I've stayed in the sport, is because of the community. And I hope those of you who have never done it, and if you do decide to become a, you'll see it. 
We have a, even a boxing match here, a show on April 16th. I highly recommend coming to and seeing how we all interact with each other. It's very different than what you see on TV. We are a very strong knit community that has each other's backs. Um, so yeah, reach out to your nonprofit, get them on, get them on board, and see if they'll help you. Then share your post and see, hey, maybe a board member will do a match. Like, hey, this week if I hit a thousand dollars, I have somebody who will be a match donor. You know, and guess what? There's a trick to that. Sometimes they say they have a match donor. There's no match donor. I know these tricks of like nonprofit world and all that. Just like, you know, do the work for try to find somebody who will be a match donor for you. Um, a great way to double the money that you raise that week. Um, any questions on that part? Yes. What's a match donor? So, hey, this week I have a someone who will match whatever I raise up to 500 bucks. Okay. So you have an anonymous person, they always say, mm -hmm. that will match. So guess what? You're by, I'm your one of your buddies. I'm like, hey, if you get, um, or I'm a board, board member of your nonprofit, mm -hmm. if you, I'm sorry, what's your name? Abby, if Abby raised, Abby, if you raised 500 bucks this week, I will match that 500 bucks. So, and you put it out there. I've done it, I've had friends who have gone through um, some stuff and they put up like GoFundMe's and I said, hey, I'll match. You know, that's always what I like to do because everybody likes that feeling like my money's gonna be doubled. So I'll be like, hey, if you can raise, whatever you raise this week, I'll double it. So they can put it out to their followers and get that, I've, I've done that a lot. You, you'd be surprised how many people will wanna do that. And you can put it out there and you're gonna think, Hey, will anybody be a, a match donor this week for me up to 50 bucks or 10 bucks even or 25 bucks? And you get three people who will be match donors for 25 bucks. That might get somebody who wasn't gonna donate, they might be like, well, yeah, I'll donate because it's gonna double my money. Hope that makes sense. Um, you will be required to sell 10 tickets to the event. I believe they're not in here, but you get a little special code or we, we're gonna work out something so you get credit for that. Um, do, do, do. do you guys actually have that figured out with, with, uh, we'll with you? Or that last year. Okay, awesome. So yeah, we'll, we'll get with that, how that's. Um, we are asking that you guys raise a combined total between tickets and tables and all the different opportunities, $5,000 each, okay? Um, now, if you get to like $3,000, I'm not gonna be like, oh, you're out. If I know that you've been doing the work, Okay, that's a difference. I'm a little bit nicer than some of the other ones that will like literally have to make you put a card on file and we'll run your, we'll, yeah, get your butt out there. Um, that will run your card for the difference. I'm not that, I just, I wanna see more that you guys are putting the effort. No, what I will say is if I have three people, and that sometimes this does happen, just so you guys know, it might get to the, even the night of, you might have a match all the way up until the night of, and your opponent gets injured that week in training and you might not have a match. I'm sorry, I will do my best to find a fill-in, all that stuff. Um, but that is that is the possibility. It's boxing, it's unpredictable a little bit. Um, but if I have, you know, three people in the same weight category, same that I could match, and let's just say, and let's have, I'll just give this example. Last year I had two people, they had not even raised 500 bucks three weeks out. And I'm like, hey, you guys like, guess what? You guys are now raising money to get, get your match. Like, I'm gonna put it out, that challenge out there. You're not, they weren't putting in the effort. Um, they weren't training out of my gym, those two, but I'm like, you're on the bubble. I might pull you for my card. Because again, this is a charity event, you guys. Um, I don't, I'm not trying to be, that's, that's, I'm trying to make it very clear what this is about. So as much work that you put in the gym, you should be putting in that work into raising money, if not more, you know. Um, any questions on that? And we will do our best to help you guys with that fundraising. Um, I'm gonna talk to one of my good friends who was chair of I Have a Dream in Boulder and is the most amazing fundraiser I have ever met. Um, I went to their little luncheon and it's like $150,000 to sponsor one of their classes. I'm like, one day I wanna be able to do that. Like I was all pumped up. I don't know how, it would take a miracle for me to ever do something of that scale. But maybe I could do it through the gym, maybe one day. Um, but I'm like, and then she had me pumped up and like that event made me want to be able to do something like that. And that's the type of like coaching um, that she can give you. I can coach you for the ring and I'm really good at that. She's like the equivalent of that level to coach you guys in fundraising because she's really pumped up 
and give you the skill to do it well. Um, so yeah. Any questions? So far? No, sir? I have a question. Yeah, please. I love the story of the red hooded guy. Well, it can be any question. Throw um, it at me. I like you, uh, If you're like the cleaning boy, then would you recommend like strapping that? Yes. Like you're getting ready to box. You're not going to be lifting a barbell over your head. Yes. Like there's like what we call in training. Like even for my competitive athletes, when they first start, they're training to train. You're, they're trying to learn that skill. So all of your time and energy should be going towards learning to box. I don't even really, even like the road work and all that running, I'd rather see instead of you spending 30 minutes running on a road, 30 minutes of shadow boxing. Cause you're new. You need to spend all of your time and energy learning how to box. That's where you should be investing your time. We don't even, for elite athletes, we don't even get into like strength and conditioning to maybe you're a national caliber or, or even a state caliber athlete, then we start looking at supplementing with strength and conditioning programs. You know, until you're a, you've won like a state championship in my gym, I, most of your time should be spent on becoming a better boxer, not better at throwing a medicine ball. Now there might be certain things that I see in an athlete that, oh, well this, this exercise will help them, like the bat bag, some of the strength and conditioning stuff that is reinforcing the skill of boxing but laying on your back, pressing a bar up and down, isn't really, it's gonna make you stronger, but it's not a skill. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Okay, good. That was a good question, so thank you for it. Can I, can I ask you a follow-up a little bit? Of course. Do you think, um, when you talk about like balancing uh, training, like not simply resting? No, no, get some recovery days. Um, it depends on the athlete and how much they've been training already. It really does, and I can, in my gym, I kinda guide people on that, but be, at least four days a week, but making sure that you're recovering outside of that. If you've already been training and you have a pretty good fitness program already established, and then you can probably get five or six, but you gotta listen to your body and take care of it and rest, you know, recover. If you're just like totally, there's a difference between, ah, oh, I don't really wanna go to the gym today. Like, I got this going on, I got that going on, and man, I am whipped, I am so tired, I didn't sleep well last night, you know, this is what, like, I'm just so tired between those two stepping into the gym. The first one is like, uh, you're just kind of like giving your way, self a way out, push through, but if you, you didn't sleep well, da 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 da, then you probably need a rest day, so, good question. You're allowed to ask questions, that's how I say you can. Anyone else? You, any gym. I mean, we got Topera. Um, Carmen Chomi has a couple athletes. I don't think they have any this year. Uh, bring it back. There is a gym in Atlanta that might bring an athlete in Nashville. Um, we are definitely like the hub gym. I try to get other gyms involved, but um, sometimes it's really, and also if you don't live near here and you're like in Denver, you need me to help you find a gym, I can help you find a gym. Um, Topera is the one that I really suggest if it works for you in Denver. Awesome. They're training out here, right? Yeah. yeah. They're a great gym. Is that one part training here? Yeah. Um, like, what's the process of signing up to go to yep. the gym, the club, um, yep. and like, what's the price? Like yeah, well, we can give you guys all that, but it's mm -hmm. all access is 130 a month. Okay. And that gets you all the open gym, all the classes, awesome. and all that. So we can get when you, you're going to do, you haven't boxed yet, right? So yeah. we do the intro class. Okay. And even that, if you got time, I'll go out and get it. If you can, instead of waiting until next Saturday, mm -hmm. getting in this week. Let's get you going. Okay. So I'm gonna get you a 30 minute private with one of my coaches. I think it's 20 bucks or something. Oh, okay. So any other questions? Can I ask about recommended sparring? Like so if you're working out five times a week, how should you spar? No, you should be sparring three or four times though. You should be sparring like twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah. No. Fall I'm a quality over quantity. Quality sparring, you know. And there's a lot of other stuff. We do a lot of drilling in this stuff, partner drilling, defensive strategies work that you're not getting hit. You know, you're, it's a controlled environment. So, so it's just those two main blocks of sparring. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'll throw on a Saturday thing when you're training here, but I think two, if you're being consistent, is really yeah. solid. You won't do a lot of, I will tell you this, you won't do a lot of live rounds here. First of all, for your training level and all that, you know, you can do some, but I don't mean I can, I can control the environment and make it really challenging, so. Anything else?
thank you guys for your patience listening to me talk. I really try not to be too long-winded, but I, I am naturally. I you can't help it. I'm a coach. <laughs> What's up? Hey, what's up? You love golf. I do. You know I do. Some, yeah. Are you, are you excited to turn around the training on, on Lorena? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait. I already have it. It's so funny because we go back and forth. I'm like, I'm like in dance. Like when I'm doing dance, I'm like, this is exactly what I do in boxing. Why can't I do it in dance? Like I get this. And she does the same thing in here. She's like, I know this from dance. Why am I having a hard time with it in boxing? It's the kind of, it's fun to have that play. It's so much fun. Yeah, and if you guys want to do any bachata or salsa, that is your gal. <laughs> it's my our studios in Broomfield. It's super fun. So, no other questions? No. How many of you guys plan on training out of this gym or have a gym already? In here? Did you say outside of this gym? Yeah, outside. Well, let's go outside of this gym. Okay, where are you guys at? Right here. Nice, good, good. Everybody else here? What, what weight are you? Weight? Yeah. Uh, right now, probably about like 215, going to be 205. Okay, that's what you're going, heading for is 205? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when do we do um, like our preliminary weigh-ins or something like that? Do we have to do the same? I'll get with Sam to send me like photos and stuff like that. Um, shoot, I had on my counter. I will send you guys ASAP the ones I have on my list. Um, what day we will do our trials? Sorry. I think I was going to do it the 21st, but I think I'm going to move it. i got to look at the schedule the week before that. There will be a Saturday where we will do a trial sparring um, session with your opponent. Okay, just to make sure it's a good match and if I need. And then that way you know, hey, I need to go back and work on this thing. It gives you at least three weeks to go back home, get with your coach, formulate that plan. So. Nothing else? Go enjoy this beautiful day. We will send you guys a follow-up email. Thank you so much for your time.